Handsome Harley Race. Eight times NWA world champion and the first ever United States champion. I thought the episode was good, uh, incomplete, as most of these are due to time constraints, but it was good. The thing you already hear about Harley is how tough he is. And, you know, given some of the things that he went through in his life as far as injuries and tragedy, you know, he was definitely tough. But he also beat up his wife, which I did not know. And it doesn't take much of a tough guy to do that, so that was disappointing to hear. Jim Cornette made the episode stronger, as he did with the Chris Colt one, because he's he's a great historian, you know? He's perfect for these types of shows. And Trevor Murdoch was interviewed. He was trained by Harley, and he said Harley told him most of these stories personally. Mick Foley was interviewed. He was inspired by Harley because he was the first man he ever saw take a clothesline to the floor and a backdrop to the floor. Harley was innovative. There's a lot of spots that you see today that were taken from him. Or he was the first one to popularize it. Uh, the Triple H bump, where he would be whipped into the corner and he would go flying out over the top rope. That was a Harley race bump. Triple H got it from Harley. Ric Flair got it from Harley. The flying headbutt was a Harley race move. He was doing table spots years before anybody else was doing them. They interviewed his ex-wife, who was married to Harley for 24 years. Before that, though, he got married at the age of 17. And his wife was pregnant with their first child. And they gave the short version in the episode, but straight from Harley's book, was the first major car accident that he was in, which nearly ended his career before it had a chance to get started. He had only been wrestling for a couple of years by this point. And it was Christmas night. He and his wife had just married, I think, the month before. On one side of the road, coming up the hill, is Harley's car. On the other side of the road is a tractor trailer loaded with eggs. Neither can see the other over the hill. And they're just barreling towards each other. The tractor trailer swerves, it jackknifes, the cab and the trailer slam into Harley's car. His wife is pronounced dead at the scene, including their unborn child. Harley doesn't know from any of this because Harley is unconscious. He's pronounced dead too. They can't get a pulse on him. Only when he started moving in the ambulance, then they realize, oh shit, this guy's still alive. A few days later, he regains consciousness. He asks the doctor, where's my wife? And the doctor says, what wife? You don't have a wife. And he said he knows the doctor was just being ignorant when he said that, but if he was physically able to, he would have gotten up out of that bed and that would have been the end of the doctor. And I believe it. So his wife is dead. His unborn child is gone. And now they want to amputate one of his legs because he's so badly injured. And that would have been the end of his career. And it was only when the promoter, Gus Karras, he showed up at the hospital, he was able to convince the doctors to let them go get a second opinion at a different hospital. And they did get that second opinion, and they were able to save Harley's leg. It's like the Lex Luger story. I mean, Luger tells of his motorcycle accident. His arm was in such horrible shape. They wanted to amputate his arm. And I think Sting was there, and Sting was raising holy hell, and he got in touch, I think, with the promoter, and they were able to get him a second opinion, and that saved Luger's arm. I mean, what is this, the first thing these people think of? Let's just cut it off? <laughs> yeah, not much we can do here. Let's just cut the fucking thing off. So then he was told he would never walk again, let alone wrestle, and he claims he told the doctor, I'll send you ringside tickets to my first match back. And for the rest of his life, he hated Christmas because of the trauma from the accident. He always associated that with that holiday. His ex-wife says that he was only going 30 miles an hour down the road when he had that accident that killed his first wife. After that, he never followed the speed limit ever again. And that's all you ever hear are stories about what a maniac Harley was on the road. She says if the sign said 70, he would be going 90. And that's he was notorious for that. That you're Driving fast and drinking beer while he drove. A great combination. He won his first NWA title in 1973. And at that point, he was a made man. He was so important to the central state's territory in Kansas, they let him buy into it. So he owned a piece of it. And he dropped the title to Ric Flair. It was the main event. Very first Starcade, 1983. But not before Vince McMahon tried to steal him away. Vince McMahon doing Vince McMahon things. Now, Vince McMahon knew that Harley was about to drop this belt to Ric Flair. 
I guess it was probably common knowledge at that time that that's what this whole Starcade event was being built towards. And he also knew that he was about to go national. And he wanted to screw around with Flair getting the belt. So two days before Starcade, okay, two days before Thanksgiving, Harley gets a call from Vince. He wants to fly Harley up to Connecticut the next day to meet with him, which was the day before Starcade. And in his book, Harley admitted, he goes, you know, he was depressed about dropping the belt to Flair because back then being the champion meant you made the most money and all the fame that came with it. So he agreed. He said, okay, I'll meet with you. I'll I'll hear what he has to say. As the story goes, Vince wanted him to no-show Starcade and come work for him. And he promised Harley a $250,000 signing bonus if he did so. And it's not like Vince doesn't have a history of these things. I mean, he tried to get Mike Goldberg to do the same thing in 2005. He wanted him to no-show a UFC pay-per-view and come, you know, be his new play-by-play announcer on Raw to replace Jim Ross because forever and a day, Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn were constantly trying to replace Jim Ross. So Harley, ultimately, he says, out of loyalty, he just can't bring himself to do it. So he declines. Now, they're at a restaurant meeting when this is all happening. And he declines. As they're leaving the restaurant, this is according to Harley in his book, says Vince and Linda, they're walking a little bit ahead of him and his wife. And he can see Vince's whole demeanor change. Like the way he's walking, he's walking with more of a swagger. I picture the Vince McMahon strut as he's leaving the restaurant. All of a sudden, Vince turns around and he leg dives Harley Race. He leg dives the NWA World Champion. Which sounds like a terrible idea. He's trying to take this man down. Harley cross-faces Vince with his left arm and says he could have snapped his neck with the other one, or I guess with the left arm. He could have snapped his neck if he wanted to. And his wife told him not to do it, so he let go. In the episode, the story is that he choked Vince McMahon unconscious. And so the main event of Starcade went off as planned and Flair got his big moment. That could have changed history had Harley agreed to do it because two months later is when Vince McMahon put the world title on Hulk Hogan. Had Harley come in as the NWA champion, would that have changed Vince McMahon's plans? I say probably not. He probably would have just brought him in and paid him very well to have Hogan beat him so that he could say Hulk Hogan defeated the real NWA world champion. Hogan is now the undisputed, you know, wrestling champion. I doubt Vince McMahon gave a shit about Harley Race himself. He just wanted to fuck with the NWA. This was not about signing Harley Race. And that wasn't the only Vince story that, you know, they they shared a long-told story here in this episode. Long told by Hulk Hogan. He actually told it on the Joe Rogan podcast last year. Vince McMahon was expanding. He wanted to take over that territory in Kansas, the central state's territory that Harley owned a piece of. This did not go over very well with Harley Race. Because he wants to know, why is he invading his territory here? And so they're promoting Hogan as the real world champion for an event that they're bringing to Kemper Arena in Kansas City. Kemper Arena is the same arena where Owen Hart died. As Hogan tells the story, and those are some dangerous words. (laughs) Any sentence that starts with, Hulk Hogan says, you already know, it, it might be a doozy. But there there probably is some truth to what he says here, but uh, as Hogan tells it, he shows up that afternoon of the show, and somebody tells him, Harley Race is here, and he's got a gun. He tried to light the ring on fire, right? This is what Hogan says he was told. And he's also told that if Harley, Harley said that if he finds Hogan, he's going to kill him. Hogan's version of this is hilarious. I want to believe so badly that it's true. He claims his stomach was bothering him that day. I could, just, I could just picture him doubled over like, oh, brother, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta find the toilet, brother. So he's in the bathroom at the arena when suddenly Davy Boy Smith walks in and he says, oh, my God, Harley. I can't do the accent, but like, oh, my God, Harley's here. He's going to kill you, Hogan. Hogan says he couldn't pull his yellow tights up fast enough. He didn't even wipe his ass. He got the hell out of there because he knew he had no chance, especially if the, if the man had a gun. Now, Hogan was physically bigger than Harley Ray, especially at that point he was younger, he was bigger, but he would be no match for a gun. Even though the head of Paramount, or whatever studio it was, 
wanted Hogan to be the next John Wayne if he is to be believed. Now, would John Wayne run from a gunfight? Probably not. Hogan says he turned the corner as he's leaving the bathroom, and there's Harley Race with a gun right in his face. And Harley tells him, I should kill you for doing this to me. And then he puts the gun down, and he says, but I really need a job. (laughs) Now, Harley's version is that there was no gun. He walked into the locker room. He found Hogan. He gave him an open hand slap, not to the face, but to the rib cage. And when Hogan turned around and saw who it was, he fell back at his chair. In the episode, they said that Harley actually did light the ring on fire that night. Where the truth lies is somewhere in the middle. I feel like we're getting bits and pieces of the actual story here, but I so badly want that Hogan story to be true. Hogan, though, he he may have helped Harley get a job in the company because Harley eventually did come to work for Vince. This was this was in 86, and they brought Harley in, and he was doing the King of Wrestling gimmick, which I'm sure was goofy to a lot of... I mean, it is goofy. I mean, he's got the, the robe and the scepter and the crown. I mean, it's it's goofy. Especially for a guy who, you know, a lot of fans grew up watching Harley Race. He's the tough guy, you know, no nonsense NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. But as someone who became a fan after that, I only knew of Harley Race as the king, you know, managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan. When he came in, he won the King of the Ring tournament. This was when the King of the Ring was still a house show gimmick, it was not a pay per view yet. He got a robe, he got a scepter, his opponents would have to kiss his feet. After the matches, you know, kiss my royal feet. One of my earliest childhood memories involves King Harley Race. It was the 1987 Slammy Awards. And there was a giant brawl involving Harley Race and Hacksaw Jim Duggan. It is still one of the craziest things that I have ever seen. They brawl off stage because it's a live ceremony. It's like a big... It's like if you were watching the Oscars, it's in this big auditorium. Okay, this is where the 1987 Slammys are being held. They brawl off stage, and I'm sure everything that followed, I have to assume most of this was pre-taped, until they eventually brawled back out in front of the live crowd at the very end. But you had Gorilla Monsoon, he rushes off stage to go see what's going on, now he's in the back, and he's got his microphone, he's off to the side providing running commentary as these two are fighting. There's live farm animals, for whatever reason, back there, chickens in cages, the cages are being opened up, feathers are flying everywhere. Harley, in a shoot interview that he did, said that they filmed one scene that did not air on TV where he claims they wanted him to kill one of the chickens. So he grabbed one of the chickens and ripped its head off. And blood was splattering all over the place. I don't know how true that is, but he did grab one of the chickens, I think by the neck, and he started flinging it around. He was beating on Duggan with it, using it as a weapon. It was horrible. And apparently the chicken died. Uh, Duggan has told that story. It got them a lot of heat with NBC. Harley ended up with powder all over his face, and you know he had the curly, he had the curly hair, so he looked like a clown. This is my earliest memory of Harley Race, the former eight-time NWA World Champion, one of the toughest men in the business, looking like a clown, brawling through women's dressing rooms in the back and flinging chickens around. This was Vince McMahon's vision of wrestling in the 1980s. They talked about the bump that he took onto a table outside the ring during his match with Hulk Hogan on Saturday night's main event, and they had footage of it. Uh, What happened is, I mean, if you go back and watch the match and you watch the bump, I mean, especially compared to a lot of these table bumps you see today, this is nothing. Like, it looks like nothing. Hogan is laid out on a table outside the ring. I said Harley was one of the earliest ones doing table bumps in his matches. Hogan is laid out across a table. Harley gets up on the apron. And he goes through the table. He very slowly, like his body goes limp and he falls forward, but Hogan moves out of the way and Harley goes through the table uh, stomach first. It's a pretty straightforward bump, except that the table didn't fully break. I don't know. I don't remember if it broke at all, actually, but it didn't fully break and he blew out his small intestines. And his son found him later that night, I guess, on the floor of his apartment in the fetal position. He thought he was dead. And he ended up with an abdominal hernia. It required multiple surgeries. That ended his WWF career. I don't remember him ever coming back after that. Uh, He did eventually wrestle again, but he was never the same. 
And he was getting older at that point. His body had been through so many accidents and injuries. You know, the leg thing from many years earlier. So he was just a physical wreck anyway. There was a a terrible boating accident that his ex-wife talked about. He was drinking scotch. He left the house very angry. I think they had a fight. He took his boat out at night. He ended up plowing into another boat that had all of its lights off. Uh, A lot of people in the other boat and Harley, they all got injured. The police came. He resisted arrest while drunk, which is never a good thing to do. So what did his wife do? His wife called Harley's psychiatrist. So this is the first that we're hearing that Harley was seeing a shrink. And the doctor advised her, leave immediately. And she did. And she filed for divorce the next day and filed a restraining order against him. Uh, Harley had supposedly told her previously, if she ever left him, that he would get rid of her. She said it was rough, you know, being with him. And she knows that she should have told somebody about it, but she never did. You know, she was scared or, you know, it only happened once or twice and, you know, he didn't mean it. You know, a lot of the excuses that you probably hear in situations like this. But they had a horrible divorce, and his son would read all about it in the papers because Harley was such a well-known figure in town. One woman who was injured in the boating accident ended up with two broken legs, wanted $10 million. The judge ruled that Harley had to pay $250,000 because he was drunk, and that put him in financial ruin and led to him joining WCW as a manager. And his pairing with Big Van Vader in WCW was perfect. And that was peak Vader, you know, during that WCW run, his feud with Sting, uh, Foley. Mick loved having Harley there during his feud with Vader. He said it was great. Uh, They didn't mention this, but his WCW run came to an end after another car accident. He was driving across a bridge when he hit a pothole, popped his airbag, he lost control of the car, he slammed into a concrete barrier. And that pushed the engine block into the front seat. It almost crushed his legs. They covered the Secrets of Wrestling special. Remember that? Aired on NBC back in 1998. It was like Wrestling Secrets Exposed. And it was completely... It was completely antithetical to what Harley Race stood for. But he did... They had him in a mask. They were kind of concealing his identity. You could tell who it was. You know, just the, the the silhouette and the voice. It was pretty obvious it was Harley Race. And there he is on national television exposing the secrets. It's like the, a magician going on television and giving away all the magic tricks. Completely antithetical to what this man stood for, but he needed the money. He did it for the money. It talked about stomping your feet in matches and why that's done and blading and salt in the eyes, which is really just baby powder. The stunt granny scene is classic. That was the best part of the whole thing. You got to make money, I guess. But it was Harley Race. You know, if it was anybody else, somebody might have done something to him. But who the fuck was going to mess with Harley Race? (laughs) What were they going to do to him? What were they going to do to him that hasn't already been done to him? Uh, One of the few men he was to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame and the WCW Hall of Fame, which did not last very long. One of the more legendary names in the industry for sure. And I will I will share one more story with you. I told this one years ago, but it's worth telling again. Whenever WWE would come to Kansas City for a Monday Night Raw taping or a SmackDown taping, Harley would invite the boys over to his house for a barbecue. And one thing he was famous for was his chili. Owen Hart was the king of ribs. And I'm not talking about food. Mark Henry talked to me. I just interviewed Mark Henry, right, the the week and a half ago. And we talked about Owen. And he talked about some of the pranks that Owen would pull on him when they were on the road together. There's a hot sauce called Insanity. Owen happened to have three bottles of it on him when he came to Harley's house. And when nobody was looking, he poured all three bottles into this big old pot of chili. Long story short, Harley ended up chasing after Owen and sticking him with a cattle prod for messing with his chili. The moral of the story is, don't mess with a man's food. Especially if that man is Harley Race. Those are good words to live by. 